in today's class what's going to happen is we're going to talk about two or three again very important moral questions from last year papers these questions are from the previous year cbse board papers and i'm also going to help you understand how to present your answers especially the five markers done so without any more delay let's quickly start with question number 1 explain the action of dilute hydrochloric acid on the following with the help of a chemical equation this question has come for 3 marks i guess in the paper of 2015 or 16 and this question if you carefully look have three parts so this three parts individually carry one mark each that means if you correctly write sorry that means if you correctly write the answer for first part correctly we are going back to the previous slide there you go first part correctly you're going to get one mark second part second mark and third part third mark so what's going to happen here is when you are asked to write the chemical equation you have to write the balanced equation and also include the physical states if you remember done so magnesium ribbon sodium hydroxide and crushed eggshells by the way what is the composition of crushed eggshells what is present inside it can i see some of your answers in the chat box crushed eggshells very good they have calcium carbonate make sure you all learn those common names of calcium compounds for sure what's calcium oxide hydroxide carbonate calcium compounds and their common names done so let's quickly begin to be able to answer this question we need of course the reactivity series about which we also spoke in the last class there you go this is the same mnemonic that i was talking to you in the first class of sprint please stop calling me a careless zebra instead learn how copper saves gold and the first letter of every word gives you a hint to remember the metal in the reactivity series ka order so if this is useful to you make sure you make use of this and if you are having any other mnemonic which is best and which you already have learned please stick to that so now to be able to understand if dilute hydrochloric acid is reacting with so and so metals or not the metal has to be more reactive than hydrogen which is present in dilute hydrochloric acid isn't it so right now let's check the metals that we are dealing with we are talking about magnesium ribbon which is just magnesium and check where magnesium is here magnesium is here it's one of the reactive metal present about carbon and this is of course more reactive than hydrogen so first reaction displacement is possible but let us now see how to write these chemical equations using the tips of yesterday done are you all ready make sure you have a book with you and you also practice writing equations along with me that's when it's going to be of some use to you done so magnesium ribbon of course the symbol is going to be mg right magnesium ribbon mg it is in solid physical state plus they are talking about dilute hcl so dilute hcl and magnesium are your reactants you have to say or you have to write the product formed when these two are in touch with each other or when these two are allowed to be in clo close proximity magnesium since it is more reactive of course this is going to displace hydrogen and as i discussed in chapter number 1 if you have two cations and one anions according to reactivity series then it's going to be a single displacement reaction and how do you write the products of single displacement you just have to let magnesium come to the place of hydrogen and hydrogen exits the structure as a result of which we get mgcl is it also remember criss cross method of writing chemical formula it has to be mgcl2 why because magnesium's valency is 2 and chlorine's valency is 1 and then h h is an atom and it can't exist it's not stable so make sure you balance the equation how take two moles of hcl it leads to formation of h2 and mgcl2 is already written so now this is a balanced equation so when you are writing your chemical equations make sure you are balancing them and also make sure you are 
cross verifying if the reaction is feasible or not with the help of reactivity series right are you all able to follow now let's get into the second part of the question sodium hydroxide with again dilute hydrochloric acid but then for that to be seen i mean for that to be understood let's write the reactants first sodium hydroxide is naoh plus we are talking about dilute hcl right so now can you suggest which kind of mechanism is going to happen over here by observing the reactants can you get to know if it is a single displacement or a double displacement or what is it exactly yes you can get to know right please don't mug up the equations make sure you understand how to write the products here you are having two cations and two anions right one is sodium other one is h plus just inter exchange the positions of sodium and h using their valencies keeping their valencies in notice so what happens sodium is to be written in place of h it gives you nacl plus what else do you have you are having oh and h which combine with each other because h will be written in place of sodium correct so you would be obtaining h2o and closely observe which type of reaction is it can you observe and tell me is it a of course it's a double displacement but then is there any specific name for this reaction which is happening between a base and an acid yeah it's a acid base reaction it's neutralization be technical when you are writing the names yeah it's between acid and base so you call it as neutralization reaction giving you a salt and water followed by next part crushed eggshells as discussed before crushed eggshells are nothing but calcium carbonate and what's going to happen if you react calcium carbonate with dilute hcl first of all is the reaction feasible yes it is feasible how do i know calcium is here and dilute hydrochloric acid ka hydrogen is here calcium is more reactive so reaction can happen it will go further and if it is going further then what is going to be the product the product is here calcium carbonate but one thing i want you to note down is about h2o and so called co2 how did we get this all of a sudden simple it's h2co3 carbonic acid which is not stable at room temperature immediately it splits into h2o and co2 so now cso3 plus hcl is also a double displacement hydrogen is in the place of calcium leading to formation of h2co3 and that's unstable gives you h2o and co2 observation of the reaction is you get to see the bubbles of co2 escaping out of your reactant mixture done so this is about question number 1 it's a three marker and if you write it as it please you're going to get completely three marks yeah so you learn how to frame your answers according to the number of marks done so shall we go to the next question are you all able to follow yeah right very good now quickly moving on whenever i ask you some questions you can talk to me through the chat box and i hope you all know it done so now let's quickly get into the next question the second question is here it's a two marker again from the previous year question paper of class 10 both which is 2.15 ml of water and 10 ml of sulfuric acid are to be mixed in a beaker you have to mix both of them there are two parts of this question part 1 is uh, state the method that should be followed with reason part 2 is what is the process called as so it's two marker and there are two parts what do you think one mark for each part when you are writing the answer make sure you write it in pointed way and you also make sure you highlight the important points for example this is just a theory question but still i picked it up because of two reasons of which one is i wanted to show you how should you frame answers for theory questions write them in point wise manner and highlight the important points when the examiner is i mean sorry when the person who is correcting your paper is looking at your presentation the highlighting points should be in front of him whichever points are important whichever points are heavy enough should be in front of his eyes that's when you get fullest marks easily right so to talk about the answer for this question in particular this is a technical question you can also call it as practical based question just observe this they are talking about yeah they are talking about 
state the method that should be followed when you are diluting an acid with water should you add acid to water water to acid what is the reason why should you pick up the particular method we all know dilution of acids is a highly exothermic reaction so what because it is highly exothermic if you don't do it carefully it splashes onto our face so we got to be extremely careful how you have to take the water first and add the acid drop by drop by drop by drop using the dropper otherwise at least slowly from the sides of the container so what happens if you are adding it slowly the dilution happens slowly and the heat energy released would be compensated by the water that's there in the beaker if you do the reverse of it you have taken so much of acid and adding drops of water the procedure is gonna resemble a blast of diwali the acid splashes on to the faces of people who are around because when you are adding water to acid what's happening the more quantity of acid is producing more quantities of heat which is dangerous so you always have to add acid to water as a result of which you will be safe enough and you have to do it because the process is extremely exothermic and this process called as dilution when there are two parts in the question it's mandatory that your answer also is aggregated in two parts don't mix all of them and write together write it separately are we clear done shall we quickly move on to the next question ready everyone are you all making note of the important points as i already mentioned if you have any more glitches in this chapter other than what are we discussing right now here feel free to comment in the comment section of this video i'll help you out done 